Good evening, beloved of God. Welcome on this uh, Wednesday evening in Lent as we gather once again uh, for Evensong. Um, I'm Pastor Eric Murray, a pastor with Shades Valley Lutheran Church in Birmingham, and this is Pastor Pauline Farrington. I am um, on the Senate staff, coordinator of pastoral care for rostered ministers. It's great to be with you uh, tonight as we gather as the Mid-Alabama Deanery of the ELCA Southeastern Synod. Um, at this time, I invite you to light a candle if you have one nearby and prepare your hearts for a uh, continued even song as we move into the confession. To you all hearts are open, to you all desires known, to you there are no secrets, almighty God, we come to you all hearts are open, to you all desires Almighty God, we come to you, all hearts are open, to you all desires known, to you there are no secrets. 
presence, Almighty God, we come to you. All hearts are open to you. All desires known to you. There are no secrets, Almighty God, we come. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you, that we may worthily magnify your name to you O god all, all hearts are open to you all desires known we come, come to you confessing our, our sins forgive, forgive us in your mercy and remember, remember us in your love Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth. For the sake of your goodness, in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. By the mercy of God, we are united with Christ Jesus, in whom we are forgiven. We now rest in the peace of Christ and rise in the morning to serve. Amen. God make speed to save us, O oh Lord make haste to help us, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, O oh God make speed to save us, O oh Lord make haste to help us, as it was in the beginning, Amen. 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 Oh, gracious light, pure brightness of the ever living Father in heaven. Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the faithfulness heed my supplications 
Answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant. For in your sight shall no one living be justified. I remember the time past. I muse upon all your deeds. I consider the works of your hands. I spread out my hands to you. My soul gasps to you like a thirsty land. O oh Lord, make haste to answer me. My spirit fails me. Do not hide your face from me. Or I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your loving kindness in the morning, for I put my trust in you. Show me the road that I must walk, for I lift my soul up to you. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake, for I flee to you refuge of your goodness destroy my enemies and bring all my foes to naught for truly I am your servant glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the A reading from Habakkuk, chapter 3, verses 2 through 13. Lord, I have heard your reputation. I have seen your work. Over time, revive it. Over time, make it known. Though angry, remember compassion. God comes from Teman and the Holy One from the mountain of Pharaoh. His majesty covers the heavens and his praise fills the earth. His radiance is like the sunlight with rays flashing from his hand. That is the hiding place of his power. Pestilence walks in front of him. Plague marches at his feet. He stops and measures the earth. He looks and sets out against the nation. The everlasting mountains collapse. The eternal hills bow down. The eternal paths belong to him. I saw the tents of cushion under duress. The curtains of the land of Midian were quaking. Was the Lord raging against the rivers? Or was your anger directed against the rivers? Or was your fury directed against the sea? When you rode on your horses or rode your chariots to victory, you raised up your empty bow, uttering curses for the arrows. With rivers, you split open the earth. The mountains see you and rife. A flood of water rushes through. The deep utters its voice. It raises its hands aloft. Sun and moon stand still high above. With the light, your arrows shoot. Your spear at the flash of lightning. In fury, you stride the earth. In anger, you tread the nations. You go out to save your people for the salvation of your anointed. You smash the head of the house of wickedness, laying bare the foundation up to the neck. The word of the Lord. The gospel according to John chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? 
He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She brought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Many Jews learned that he was there. They came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. The chief priests decided that they would kill Lazarus too. It was because of Lazarus that many of the Jews had deserted them and come to believe in Jesus. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you and peace from God, our holy parent. In our gospel, we find Jesus just days before his death. He is at the home of his friend Lazarus, whom he raised from the dead. Lazarus's sisters, Mary and Martha, were among those present, as were Jesus's other disciples. These are people who walked closely with Jesus throughout his ministry, people who loved him and knew they were loved by him. Now, as they gather for a dinner where Jesus was the guest of honor, Mary of Bethany, in an act of love and service, anoints Jesus' feet with an expensive perfume, and then she wiped his feet with her hair. From a lens of our culture, we might find it odd that someone would put pricey perfume on feet. That is not exactly one of the pulse points where we apply our Chanel number no. five. And it certainly would be odd for someone in our society where we spend billions of dollars on hair care in this country every year to wipe the perfume off someone's feet with our billion dollar hair. So even from our own lens, we can see something unique above and beyond about Mary's action. But if we look at this text through the lens of Mary's time, through her context, we discover that Mary's act of love was not just odd, it was lavish. It was unexpected. It was without limits. Mary was a working class woman from the countryside. This perfume, which was valued at 300 denarii, would cost a day laborer a year to earn enough money to afford. This gift was generous. She wasn't going to be able to just run out the next day and buy more. It was a sacrificial gift. She showed the type of love that delights to give its best. No one would expect a person to serve another like this, but Mary's love for Jesus exceeded expectation. Abundant love often does. Society in her culture would say that it was taboo for a man to be touched by a woman in this way, and her loose hair would be deemed sensual and inappropriate for an interaction with her teacher. Mary's gift was beyond the limitations of societal norms, but she didn't care. Mary didn't do what she did to get attention. She wasn't trying to one-up her siblings and the others present. Her actions were worship, love, service, and adoration for her Savior. But as amazing as Mary's love is in our text, it is only a response. A response to the ultimate love shown by Jesus. Mary's act of love was one of thanksgiving for Jesus, who had taught her so much, who befriended her family, who raised her brother from the dead. And as one who sat at Jesus' feet and learned from him, Mary knew the ultimate sacrifice Jesus would soon make for the sake of the world. Her anointing of Jesus was not just a sign of thanksgiving. It was also a sign of Jesus' kingship and preparation for his burial, for the ultimate love he would soon show for the sake of humanity. Mary gave Jesus an extravagant gift in the using of the perfume. Jesus gave her and all of us an even more extravagant gift in eternal life. It cost her a year's salary. It cost him his life. This is the cost of love. 
Sometimes in our society, we find ourselves counting the cost of love. Jesus said, love your neighbor, but we debate about who is our neighbor and whether the provisions for loving our neighbor are too expensive. In our text, Judas questioned Mary's actions, suggested it was wasteful. Couldn't the money be used instead to take care of the poor? But the gospel writer reminds us Judas' motives weren't pure. He really wanted the money for himself. He masked his real motive in concern for the poor, but Jesus was not fooled. Jesus lifts up Mary's act of love. The sweetness of Mary's perfume counters the stench of Judas's stinginess. It is a beautiful scent that points to an ugly crucifixion. This contrast is a foreshadowing for Jesus's death. Mary anoints Jesus for his death. Judas' stinginess facilitates Jesus' death. When he arrived at his friend's house for a dinner party thrown in his honor, Jesus knew he was heading to the culmination of his life on earth. But there he found a safe place, a place of reprieve. There were people out to get Jesus, and there was a plot to kill Lazarus, who became a target after Jesus raised him from the dead. But in the midst of it all, Jesus found a safe house with his friends. It was a clear contrast from the scene outside the doors, a difference from the place where people wanted him dead. At his friend Lazarus's home, Jesus found an abundance of perfume, food, and love, a place to linger on the road to the inevitable, a place where the cost of loving him was not counted, a place where Jesus is loved extravagantly just days before he shows the most extravagant love possible. Sometimes we find ourselves on our own journeys in life in need of a safe place. Maybe there is someone or some family that has been your safe place before. Think of the smells, the touches, and the sounds that may have greeted you. Your favorite food, a comforting hug, laughter from a familiar voice. You remember who loved you profusely. You remember who loved you no matter the cost to them. You remember who loved you without limit. They were used to show you the love of Jesus when you needed it the most. Love that was generous. Love that exceeded expectation. And you, all of us, have the opportunity to show love in the same way, to be the vehicle through which the love of God is poured out lavishly on those around us. We sit today just over a year after the first cases of coronavirus impacted our communities, a year we never could have imagined, a year filled with sickness and death, but a year also filled with unprecedented love. People have picked up groceries for their neighbors, shared toilet paper and Lysol when they found it in the stores. Churches have given out food and financial support. Through drive-by birthday parties and virtual game nights, we have kept each other company, loved each other safely. Perhaps our Lysol wipes and Zoom subscriptions cost far less than Mary's perfume, but in a time where we so crave connection, these acts of love felt priceless. At the health system where I serve, we have received more than 11,000 meals for team members from the community over the last year since COVID-19 began. Sure, this food was sustenance for hungry bodies, but perhaps more importantly, it was a balm for weary souls. A generous reminder that the very people who are risking their lives daily are not alone. We all have the call to show the generous love of Christ, to exceed expectations, to love without limit. God is often up to unexpected things in our lives, working through unexpected people, working through us. We have the opportunity to respond to the love of Jesus Christ by showing the love of Jesus to others. We may not have the benefit of the incarnate Jesus present in our home for dinner, where we can directly show the same love as Mary did. 
but we can show our extravagant love for Jesus by showing extravagant love for our neighbor. Where is God at work in our communities in unexpected ways? How do we join in loving without limits? As we round the corner of this Lenten season, soon heading into Holy Week, I encourage you, dear siblings in Christ, to be even more open to seeing the ways you might love generously, unexpectedly, without limit. See the stranger amongst you. Welcome them as family. Show the love of Jesus Christ, the one who loves you the very most and who paid the ultimate cost. Go, love extravagantly. Amen. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has done great things for his holy servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has done great things his lowly servant. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty. He has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. The rich he sent away empty. He remembered his promise of mercy. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has done great things for his lowly servant. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was, is, and shall be. Amen. Amen. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has done great things. For his lowly servant. This time I invite you to confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, I'll make it possible so you can unmute yourself. Um, I invite you to unmute yourselves as we um, share in the prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with and you. Also with you. Let us pray together the prayer which Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be, be, be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be will done, be done on, earth on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us for our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. David, the Lord, from the time of God. And deliver us from the evil, the power, the power, the glory, for yours, now and forever. Amen. Time, I invite you to go ahead and mute your device again, if you would please, as we continue our prayer. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us and your, salvation. your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people, people sit with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only uh -huh. you but will live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us by your Holy Spirit. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those in the paths of storms, with those who work or watch or weep this night. And give your angels charge over those who sleep, those who shelter, those who are anxious or worried. Tend the sick, give rest to the weary, Bless the, the dying, soothe the suffering, comfort the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Amen.
this time to make our prayer to you. And you have sworn through your well-loved Son that when we gather in your name, you will be in the midst of us. You will be in the midst of us. Fulfill now, Lord, our desires and prayers as may be best for us, granting us to know your truth and in the world to come true. And now go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be you. to God. And I'll stop sharing my screen so we can um, read, take a look at everybody and say hello. I think you should be able to unmute yourselves.